Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be talking about the hospital strike that took place today in Gaza. I'm also going to be bringing up a kind of a preview of this Kabbalistic interpretation of what's going on, and then I'll do a, a deep dive video um, maybe tomorrow, maybe um, the next day. Uh, so people can watch that. So please watch, you know, this, this video and the subsequent video to get that deeper understanding Kabbalistically um, what's going on. Um, for the ones that haven't, please subscribe to all my channels. I have three channels on YouTube. The links are in the description of this video. I also have three channels, three other backup channels One's on Brighton, the, other, the others are on BitChute and Rumble. So please subscribe to those. So subscribe to all six channels and please help support my news coverage by subscribing to my Patreon channel. All the links are in the description of this video. So uh, let's start with what happened today, the big news today. There are lots of things that happened today, but you know, the big, the big focus. Uh, in Gaza, there is a hospital where there were a, about 500 casualties. Uh, I've heard a number that went up as much as 800. Uh, the original report was 500. So somewhere from 500 to 800 casualties. Um, and the original announcement in the news was that it was an Israeli strike. Now, what has been transpiring with certain news organizations is, is that, you know, they, they, some of them would say, we don't know yet. Many of them did not. Many of them, like the BBC and, uh, you know, um, and, you know, some others, international, uh, they went more towards, uh, this was a, a, an attack that this was a this was a strike by Israel, right? Instead of saying, "Well, we don't know yet," you know, it's again the fog of war, right? So Israel was saying, "We don't think we did this, but we're we're looking into it with the telemetry of the rockets that we shoot, um, and uh, you know, we will get back to you." Right? Well, they did. The IDF did get back. To Sky News, and there was a um, a a briefing with journalists, international journalists, and there was evidence that was sent to the United States showing that it was rockets that were being released by a terrorist group in Gaza, but not Hamas, another terrorist organization, where the rocket actually looks like it blew up above when they were releasing the rocket, it, it failed, something failed in the rocket, it blew up near or, or above the, the hospital and then fell on the hospital. So that's my understanding of what happened. So the IDF went on to Sky News saying, well, we're going to be releasing this to the public, the actual audio file um, and the video file, uh, the video file showing what was going on with the rocket and then the audio file of the, the communications that are being monitored by the IDF that's going on in Gaza. So my understanding is that they actually have you know, and they're actually listening to the, some of these terrorists and they, the terrorists basically said, oh, we got a failed rocket. That's, I haven't heard the video, the, the audio. I haven't, and I haven't seen the video yet. Um, I don't think it's been released to the public as of yet, as of this recording. So, but I think it's important to, to, to mention that mainstream media, it has a knee jerk reaction that when there is, um, civilian casualties, collateral damage, 
the assumption is it must be from Israel. Now, Israel, for sure, is causing collateral damage, and civilians are dying in Gaza. That, that's happening. But it, it's hard to believe that Israel actually targeted a hospital. All right. Um, so I don't think that the terrorists aimed at the hospital. It seems as though it was a failed rocket launch from Gaza, it exploded near the hospital and fell on the hospital. Um, let's see, but it's looking like, according to what the IDF is saying on Sky News, that there is proof that they didn't do it. They didn't have any rockets or missiles going you know, in that area at that time. And, um, you know, they have audio and, and video footage to, to prove their point. So I think that the mainstream media needs to just like, just wait and, uh, you know, I think the ones that did the news and said, well, it could be the IDF or it could be, you know, some something that happened in Gaza, right? Those news organizations, I think, were playing the middle ground and they were being journalists and non-biased. And I think that those journalists, I think, were doing the right thing. The ones that, that knee-jerked and then said, well, this must be the Israelis. It must have been the IDF without proof, um, you know, I think is a, a little disingenuous. But it is the fog of war. But what's more, what is more concerning here is now you had the UN based on a false statement by, or, or false information or misinformation, right? Um, from the Palestinians, you know, there was a statement from the UN, you know, condemning what's going on. You know, there's some sort of, coalition that is being built at the UN level uh, that is very pro-Palestinian and anti-Israeli. And they want to condemn Israel for this attack on the 500 at that time, you know, may have been as high as 800 uh, casualties from this hospital explosion, right? Um, you got to remember at hospitals, they have gases that are, they're stored, you know, the oxygen tanks and, you know, and all that. So it could be very well that, you know, there were secondary explosions that took place, um, because of this, you know, we, we don't know, but, uh, as of this recording, the IDF will be releasing a audio and a video evidence showing that this was not them. This happened, I believe, in 2021. I think it was 2021. Maybe it was 2014. But a similar in incident happened where they were blaming the Israelis, but it was really, you know, a, a, a failed rocket launch in in Gaza that destroyed a building. So uh, this is, you know, this, of course. Casualties can happen on both sides. You know, Israel can cause, you know, collateral damage and, and, and you know, unfortunate, you know, it, it, it hurts civilians. Um, they're being told to leave, right? Um, and Israel could also, you know, be trying to defend its own land and as they're lifting, you know, launching a rocket or shooting a missile, it, 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 I, I don't know of any cases, but I'm sure it does happen where they, they hurt their own people. So, you know, these things do happen in war, unfortunately. But the mainstream media needs to, and, and the UN, especially the UN, needs to be middle ground. What are the facts? Oh, we don't know yet? Okay, then we'll, we'll hold our statement or make a statement that says something on the order of this happened, you know, a hospital was hit. We don't know the root, we don't know the absolute, who actually, whose rocket it is, right? Um, or missile at the time, all right? Instead of having statements coming from the UN condemning Israel without the facts and mainstream media, especially liberal mainstream media, um, pushing a narrative that's very pro-Palestinian, pro-Gazan, 
and anti-Israeli or anti-IDF. So, um, you know, that's my take on it. Now, what I want to do, uh, what I want to do is give you a brief, a brief state, a, a brief overview of what I'm going to be talking about in a, another video that's very deep, very Kabbalistic, very scary. And the ones that do, you know, that are Jewish and do pray, actually, there is a, this is actually a method to uh, a prayer method um, that's very Kabbalistic, all right? So let me, let me, um, let me give you the overall, and I'll go into detail verse by verse and explain uh, this in much more detail in another video. I just can't do it in this video. It's just too, too involved. It'll take, you know, more than, more than, two hours, probably, probably an hour and a half, maybe an hour and a half if I move fast. But I just wanted to give a primer, all right? So there are, there are numerical codes within in the Bible. So, you know, people have heard the, the Bible code, right? And you can um, do equal space lettering, but there's also gematria, where you can see hidden things in the Torah based on a numerical code. Each letter has a numerical value. Each sentence has a numerical value. So you can do Bible code on equal space letters, or you can do Bible code based on gematria. So the Baal Hat term uh, is famous for doing gematria of the Torah, but it's not just the five books of Moses, but also prophets, psalms, you know, so you, there's there's a lot of different texts that can that, that can be applied to this, and in this case, it is psalm psalms or or the hymn. Um, in the news, when when this event took place, and you can verify this. I mean, this is this is everything is verifiable on what I'm going to be saying, which is this is really spooky. The the event was called Mission of Iron Swords. The year took place 5784. 5784 is the Hebrew year, right? The Jewish year. So, but the name of this event is Mission of Iron Swords. Now, Mission of Iron Swords is not a phrase that's in the Torah, but it has a numerical value if it's written in Hebrew. And you count the, the, the numerical value from the Hebrew letters of this phrase. That numerical value, um, so the 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 you so you you figure out the numerical value mission of iron swords in Hebrew, and then the Hebrew letters that make up uh, five seven eight four. Okay. And then you'll get a numerical value. You add those all up. So mission of iron swords, 50 set, uh, 5784, 5784. You write the 5784 in Hebrew as a number, and then you add that to the missions of iron swords. That's what the mainstream, that, that was what the news was calling this, or what the, 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 um, the mission against the, the Israel was called. Okay. Now, when you put this into a computer program, and that computer program has the text of the whole Torah, including, you know, prophets and not just the five books of Moses, but all the works, all right? And it's looking for verses that have the same numerical value, what would, what would come up? It happened to be six, there were six things that popped up, okay, using gematria not equal space lettering. So again, there's two types of Bible code that I know of. Equal space lettering, where you can take the letters equal spaced, either every third letter, every other letter, every 10th letter, and find code. Or you can do gematria of words that are linked with other words that are of the same numerical value, but it gets really spooky when you start doing numerical values of verses of, a, of an actual sentence 
and comparing it to another verse that has the exact same numerical value. Okay, so the six things that popped up in in the in the Bible Code program was Psalm chapter seven, verse eight, and this is dealing with the assembly of nations. Now I'm going to go into in depth. I'm going to read the verse in the next video. I'm going to read the verse. I'm going to give you an explanation of what's going on and then why it applies to this. But the point is, is that when if you just take what I'm saying, if you read this. You're going to go, holy shit, right? You're going to go like, there's something deeper going on here. The next the next verse that pops up is Psalm 64, verse 9. Hear my God, my, hear my God, my voice and prayer. All right. So I'm paraphrasing the verse, but, but there's a meaning to that. It's, and it, it's coupled with the first solution that came up and out of the Bible code. The next solution that comes out of the Bible code is Psalm 80, verse 13. So this is chapter 80, verse 13. Why have you uh, breached it, its fences? Okay, another weird uh, phrase. And, you know, we know what happened with, you know, the breaching of the fences. Psalm, on, I'll, again, in the other video, I'm going to read the whole verse and the, what it means, what's the normal meaning of the verse, and how it applies to, to the event. Psalm chapter 108, verse 9. Uh, this is, uh, mine is uh, Gilead. Mine is, and then what it is, it's, it's a phrase that's, kind of showing strife that's going on between the tribes. All right. Um, and also the kind of the meaning of that, that verse is, uh, you know, there's strife between the liberal and the orthodox that was going on just before the, the event that took place that everyone could verify in, in social media. All right. So uh, Psalm chapter 111, so 111. Verse eight, they are steadfast forever. Okay. And of course, the, the, the verse is longer. Again, each one of these verses, the, the, each one of these verses in Psalms has the same numerical, Hebrew numerical value as mission of iron swords, 5784. Okay. Psalm, now, uh, 100, oh, let me get back. So uh, the steadfast forever, you know, this is, um, you know, the idea that the Torah is forever and that, you know, you can get back to Torah by repenting. Psalm 119, verse 9. How, in it, it talks about how to purify the young. All right. So now you're trying to, you know, how, how do you repent? How do you purify yourself after this event? So those are, some weird, weird things that are happening. Now, the other thing that popped up, not through the Bible code, but another method of getting a, a deeper meaning of things is what's the Hebrew date of an event? So this happened on Tishrei, Tishrei uh, 22, all right? So once I've gone into Psalm 22 and read the whole chapter, chapter 22 and when you read the the six verses first and then psalm 22 it puts you in a context and this is the, this is how you can pray you can take something that this is how the kabbalists work you know they can take a numerical value of a verse and find verses that have the same numerical value and meditate on that or pray on that and you get deeper meaning from those verses, all right? Especially a big event that happens, you know, like a war, a birth, a death of someone in your family, or um, you know something that's really, really significant that has taken place, all right? Um, at the world scale, or you know, or even at a personal, all right? And um, 
you know, some of these Kabbalists, you know, they take some of these verses that they want to know the deeper meaning of a particular verse, and they'll do a similar method, right, to get the deeper understanding of the mitzvah or deeper understanding of what this is really all about. So, but you have to be very knowledgeable in Hebrew. I, my knowledge in Hebrew is not that great. And, um, you know, but, but, um, but I understand that there's this numerical value and that, you know, we have now systems, databases that can allow us to get quick answers that have similar numerical values or equal space letters that have a certain word that crosses with another word. So, um, so there's, you know, different, different ways, but the point here is, is that these verses are uncannily similar to the events that took place and what needs to take, what needs to happen. Now, the next video I do, I will read the verse. I will give you the meaning of the verse. I'll read it in, in English. I'll give you the meaning of the verse and, um, you know, the, the, you know, how it wraps up into the context of the, these events. So that's the primer of the video that I'll be coming out with. It's pretty spooky. So you just write down the, the, the Psalm chapters and verses that I told you, read them over. You know, you can, you know, look it up in Google or if you have a Psalm book at home or whatever, um, then you can, you, you, uh, you know, you can understand, you get a better, the deeper understanding. If you're Jewish and you do this, you're probably going to go, wow, you know, something's, there's going to be a, it's going to resonate. There's going to be a, there's going to be some sort of, um, spiritual vibration takes place. It's, it's hard to describe it. Um, all right. So, and these are rabbis that have, you know, that been doing this for years that you know that you know release this knowledge it's, this is not something that i made up but um but uh i do understand the power of what is happening with with this with the, these six solutions that came out so that's what's going on with the hospital as of this recording the data hasn't hasn't been released you know most likely when you see this video the audio file and the video file will come out that, that shows uh, what the IDF is, is saying. Now, you're going to have people out there that say, oh, yeah, this is all made up and this is, you know, probably all doctored and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, but, you know, this is the best that we can do. This is, the, uh, this is the, uh, another data point um, that, that is most likely showing that the mainstream media uh, was incorrect in blaming the IDF for the hospital hit and that the UN is always going to err on the side of the Palestinians and not on the Israelis, even though this is a biblical event. And we're all getting judged. We're all getting judged on this, you know, and some people are going to fare better than others in terms of their, you know, how they approach spirituality, um, you know, how, you know, are they, or do they try to help people to the best of their ability? They don't always get it right, but you know, are they a decent person? There are other people that are not decent people. There are people that are very egotistic and, and, and they don't care about others. They pretend they care and they, you know, and they, they, there's going to, the people are going to get judged in the short term and the long term. Everyone is going to be affected by this. This is biblical. This is not some normal, this is not some regular incident that took place. And it's, uh, it's because in, it, it, from my perspective, because of what happened during the high holy days, God is angry. And God is angry at the Jewish people, and God is angry at the world at large. And, um, you know, all these liberals that think that they can social, some sort of, um, some, use some sort of, uh, social engineering or or soft landing some sort of uh, using democracy and using just rationality and, you know and international affairs and all this stuff and economics that it's all going to be peaceful and it's like they read those verses i just read to you in this video and it'll be a good uh, it'll give you a good foundation to really go deep in the next video that i do on this
With that said, please help support your health and help support my work by going to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and following my protocol. You know, again, you know, I, I keep on telling people, neutralize pathogens, reduce inflammation, reduce reactive oxygen species, and that gets you very far in terms of improving your health, improving your immune system, and slowing down the aging process. When you add stuff like vitamin C, collagen, B complex to those protocols, um, a ris risveratrol, clarity factor, good night formula. When you add those things to, to the protocol, you are going to really accelerate this uh, anti-aging. So it starts with three pillars and then, you know, you add to it and there's a compound effect. If you keep on doing this regularly, you're going to slow down the aging process and fear much better. I have known people that have had chronic, chronic problems that they said, wow, Paul, you know, I'm doing what you're, you've told me to do. And, you know, the, these chronic issues are either um, ab abated or have been eliminated. So, you know, it's just something to, you know, to keep in mind that we need to have a, a, a better mindset instead of trying to treat the disease, try to prevent the disease. All right. I think, our, you know, standard, standard health care in America and probably in the Western world is disease centric, not health centric. And preventative medicine is very powerful. Um, but it's not an end all. People do get diseases and you do need to see doctors at times. Try to prevent that, right? And, you know, try to take charge of your own health. If you live a healthier lifestyle through supplementation, through proper diet, proper exercise, proper sleep, proper um, exercising your mind by reading and writing and talking to people, um, being social in the real world, not social in the digital world, uh, you will become a better person. You'll be a happier person and you'll be a healthier person. And if you stay healthy, you know, and you do this for a while, then <laughs> chances are those diseases that start to pop up when you get older, um, maybe not as severe and they may not pop up as early. So, there's there's a long term benefit to this on a financial side and on a on a um, and a health side of this. So please go to my store the dash studio dash com and get products like the toothpaste that I offer. This is a great toothpaste. This whitens your whitens your teeth, freshens your breath, neutralizes pathogens, right? Reduces that 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 gum irritation. Brings and when you do this you're reducing the chances of cardiovascular disease on top of just, you know, better oral hygiene. And this uses, this does not have any fluoride, but it uses the structural nanosilver. So by doing this, you are, this is the best, the best toothpaste that you're going to be able to get. All right. And this thing that I have in my hand is the best toothpaste that you can buy. Way better than anything else Jones has. All right. This product is amazing. So get a few tubes of this and, you know, try it out if you haven't already and you'd be amazed on, on, on the benefits of it. In addition, you know, the silver gels, you know, I have a lot of different uh, structural nano silver products. You know, this one is, is a gel and you use this on your skin as a skincare, but you can also apply it on cuts, scrapes, bruises, um, you know, burns, minor burns, right? And it's just to try to keep the area clean. But if you use it on your skin and keep it on the skin at night, um, on your whole body or just your face and your neck, uh, you'll be, you'll notice that your skin starts to tighten. It starts to clear. Your, your skin will be more clear. Uh, it will be uh, healthier looking. And um, when you couple it with vitamin C and you drink 64 ounces of, of filtered water, make sure you don't drink fluoride, any, anything with fluoride. Um, and you, um, you know, take collagen and you do that regularly with the vitamin C, the, the gel topically, 
you know, you, you take the vitamin C, you take the collagen regularly, you will start having healthier skin probably within about seven to 10 days. Um, now, now you can add resveratrol and C60 to that and it'll improve the skin even more because you're, you're applying the topical, all right? It's, it's, it's working on the skin at the, at the surface level. But when you take the vitamin C and the collagen, and the C60 and the resveratrol, it's improving the dermal layer. And, and those cross linkings that are taking place to, to make new skin, to, to make new matrix for the skin uh, will improve and you will, you will see a tightening of the skin and you will see an improvement of the skin. Uh, it takes a little longer when you're, you know, when you're doing it, the internal, you know, the internal part of, of this protocol, but over about a 30 day, uh, um, application, you're going to start seeing improvement. And the more you do this, the longer you do this, the more improvement you're going to see. Uh, and you're going to slow down that, that skin aging. Uh, and the collagen is going to help with remodeling the joints. Um, as you get older, obviously, you know, you start, you know, they don't, these, 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 uh, these joints in the knee and the shoulder and the elbow and stuff. Um, they don't work as well. So, you know, you need supplementation to help that. But uh, a big part is making sure that you drink 64 ounces of water on a regular basis um, that's filtered. I have also deodorants that, that are made from the Himalaya uh, essential oils, right? So there are herbs out there and, and you know, and plants that are grown in the Himalayas, and then the essential oils from these are are purified, and then these these deodorant bars are made from. Them. So this bar is a this this one happens to be a citrus, and this is made by Rainbow Herbals. Very high quality product, very extremely high quality product. Natural ingredients. A lot of them are certified organic. But the whole point here is, is that it's Himalayan essential oils that are in this product, and it, is, it doesn't have any aluminum in it. It's natural. It's a great deodorant. So I have it in citrus, and I also have it in peppermint tea tree. All right. This is great for your health. Right? It's a great way to detox, right? And you, you know, you use a deodorant by detox. You use it to detox. Um, but not only that, it also helps Gale, um, rainbow herbals, um, as they, you know, as she develops other products. So, you know, please purchase the product and you'd be amazed that this is going to be a wonderful deodorant that you will want to use on a regular basis. Uh, and, 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 uh, there's also another bar that I have. It's called the everything, the, the even better bar. The even better bar is good for skincare. It also has the Himalayan essential oils and you can put it on your skin and do this regularly, right? And you'll notice that your skin will get softer uh, with the, uh, the even better bar. Uh, in addition, that even better bar also can be used for cuts, scrapes, muscle pain, minor burns, it'll help speed the process. Just like how, you know, silver gel can help speed the process if you, if you have a cut in your skin, the even better bar will also do that. But the even better bar will actually relieve muscle pain. Um, and also bug bites, you know, that itching, the even better bar will reduce that, that itching sensation. So, you know, try these products that I have. They are extremely high quality. Um, so, and it'll help the news coverage that I do and, uh, help to improve your health. You know, it's this longer, this protocol idea, neutralize pathogens, reduce reactive oxygen species with C60, either in avocado or coconut oil, uh, reduce inflammation with the turmeric and the ashwagandhas, right? Take the other 
supplements like the B complex and the vitamin C and the collagen and the good night formula and the, and the, the omega three, which is great for cardiovascular health. Um, the, the, uh, clarity factor to help you, you know, be able to think quicker and get those neurons firing and make sure that you're not getting a, you know, you're not getting dendritic re recession. Um, and, and, uh, you know, you'd be amazed on, on, this, on, on the health benefits that you see in these toothpaste, you know, that I have, you know, take the toothpaste and this is, this is going to be a, a great, a, a great way to improve your health. Um, and then these bars, you know, these deodorant bars, you know, high quality, extremely high quality. There's not a deodorant bar out there that has the same level of quality as this. And this is like the Ferrari of deodorant bars, right? You know, so, but, you know, of course, they're a little bit pricey. But um, the quality, the reason why they're, they're higher in price is because the, the, what I'm offering in the store, everything is high quality. So go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. That is the dash studio dash .com. the link is in the description of this video and all my videos to get to the store and try out the products and you'd be amazed so thank you for listening thank you for supporting my work and again make sure you subscribe to all the channels to make sure that you get the updates because not everything that i can do i can keep up on youtube so you need to subscribe to everything all my channels all three youtube channels so you see the premieres get around the censorship, but also my Brighton, Rumble, and BitChute channels so you can see all, all my content. Thank you for listening and have a nice night.